Hi guys, welcome back to the Scout the Defender YouTube video. It's a video that I probably should have posted quite a while ago now, and that is all to do with the spotlights that I've got mounted up on Scout. So they are the Light Parts 35 watt spots, uh, and I've had them for a little while, and you'll have seen a little while ago now I posted about the, the rear work lights install. Well, I've actually neglected to wire these spotlights up. They've been mounted up on the car for a while, um, but with my nervousness around wiring, I was putting it off for far too long, and one day I woke up and thought, right, let's tackle it. And it was actually a lot easier than I expected. So today I'll walk you through just what goes into the install of these kind of lights. And then we'll also give you a demonstration of just how bright they are, how much they illuminate anything uh, in the surrounding area. So we'll get right into the video and I'll show you how I've gone about wiring them up. So these are the light parts DL03s. And these are, if I just pull these out, really bright spotlights that I'm gonna to mount to the top of the roof rack. So I've got four of these, they're gonna go across the top. They've come with the mounting points so I can basically just drop these onto the rack, mount them up. With that then, they have the easy connectors. You can obviously choose which how you want to connect them. So you've either got the one for kind of your independent wiring, or if I just disconnect this, we have the connection point which will basically plug and play into the loom that you can also get from ORE. So they'll just plug in, well what I'm going to have to do obviously is connect all four up together, plug them into the loom and then in the loom we have uh, a switch for on off which I'm going to change to a genuine switch which will come through the dash and I've got a blanking switch at the moment, I'll replace that with a switch for the spots. Uh, we then have the two connectors uh, if you wanted to hook up two lights. Uh, and then the connectors for the battery terminal or any live feed that you want to connect to. There's obviously a relay built in there and an inline fuse. Um, so that looms really great. It means I don't have to worry about doing too much wiring myself other than connecting uh, the four spotlights up. So you can see at the top, we've got this two pod configuration for the spotlights, which is something, a look that I wanted for quite a while. Um, and I'm really glad that I've kind of managed to achieve it. So I'll walk through exactly how we've gone to install those. So you'll notice that I've now fitted them to the new rack. So this is the front runner slimline rack and I'll do a video on this and also the, the new camping setup. But what I've done is mounted them using the uh, front runner brackets. So I've actually installed these almost upside down so the lights can kind of hang from them. I think it's a really neat solution. It means you can kind of configure the spotlights in any order that you want. Um, in terms of the wiring, if I move right back here, hopefully you can see, I'll do some close-up shots too. You can see that the cables run round the back of the uh, wind deflector on the front runner shield, um, and they're running through conduit, so I wanted to make sure that this job was really neat uh, and as tidy as possible. So what I've used is these um, kind of pads, these cable tie pads here to kind of hide and tuck the wires up behind um, the rack itself so it's a really neat job and from the front you can't see any of the wiring which I was really keen to do. If I come around this side you can see kind of where the wires are running through the conduit uh, and I've also left all of the plugs that come with the uh, light parts loom uh, in place so I can easily unclip uh, the lights from the bar uh, from the rack sorry uh, and it's really easy to kind of move them uh, around. So I'm really happy that I've kept that loom. That loom's available kind of on the ORE website um, and that's helped me throughout all of this because uh, I wouldn't have really known where to start. So they're, one, they're connected through to the light parts loom, through these plugs here, and then I've run the cables through conduit down the back of the snorkel here that you can see. So this is all the conduit running down and then if I move just around here, you'll hopefully be able to see just down here is where the conduit runs into the back of the bonnet. So on a Puma, I'm not sure about the other models, but there's basically a gap between the bulkhead and the bonnet, which is where I've run the cables through. Uh, so it's really neat. Um, I was speaking to Ian from IRB at the billing show, and he recommended that you can actually run the cables down the inside of the snorkel. So you could drill a hole here and put a kind of plug I could run that conduit down and then almost through the air box and then um, through the back out, back out the air box and then through the bulkhead. Um, so maybe that's going to be a future plan. But what I'll do now is I'll open up the bonnet and show you how I've run them through into the bulkhead. 
Okay, so the bonnet's up and I'll show you the wiring underneath. This is still a little bit of tidying up I need to do here, but effectively what I've done is run the cable. So here you can see actually where the cables come through, through that gap between the bulkhead and the bonnet. They run up and over and then through these big grommets that are already within the, um, within the car. So this is on the Puma. I think these exist on um, some of the other models too. But effectively you have some blanking um, grommets that you can actually push through to install any other like, external accessories. So I pushed through one of those um, plugs and then used a metal coat hanger from the other side to pull the wires through. Um, and what I mean by the other side, if I come round into the car, the trickiest bit and the bit that was kind of putting me off doing this build was the removal of the dash. So I'll, I'll play some video or some photos of when I was doing the job, but effectively all of the dash has to come out to uh, ensure that you can run the wires nice and tidy. So there's lots of these kind of small screws all the way around the dash. The steering column has to come off, the uh, instrument panel had to come off too, but I followed some guides on the uh, LR forum and I'll post a link uh, in, the, in the description below so you guys can check that out. Um, but once you kind of tilt the dash forwards, you obviously have to also remove all of the switch gear and all of this fascia. Um, I removed it and kind of labelled it all up so I didn't get confused. Then, the, then once you've kind of done that, the whole dash can tilt forwards and you can get behind the dash where I've just kind of illustrated where the wires came through. So that's that I connected that to a wire coat hanger and pulled the wires through from this side once the dash was out the way. Once that was done, it was really easy then to run the cables kind of behind this panel through the main kind of center of the dash. And you'll see here, I now have the switch popping out. So this is just the standard switch that comes with the ORE loom, but I'm gonna tweak the wiring on that so it can come through an OEM switch and that's kind of where it will be positioned for now. Um, but at the moment it still works, so it's on the rocker switch. So if I flick it on, the light comes on uh, and the spots are on. Similar to what I did on the rear lights. So that spot, that video is uh, up on the channel and this is the, the switch for the rear lights. Um, once you kind of mounted the switch up, what I did then was run the wiring for the battery box. So the wiring actually comes down this side and then down through the gearbox tunnel and then into the, the seat box, the passenger seat box and connects to the battery terminals. It is actually a lot easier um, than I initially expected. Um, and I'm really happy with the results. It's actually really neat. You wouldn't necessarily know that the, any of the wiring is there. Um, as I say, I may do a bit of tweaking to do with the, the conduit here, uh, but overall I'm really happy uh, with the look. So that's the install or the walk around of how I installed the lights. I'm really happy with the look. Um, I think that two pod setup looks really great. So what I'll do now is wait for it to go dark and then I'll show you once they're on and in place. The power of them has kind of blown me away just how much they'll illuminate basically anything around. Um, so we'll check back when it's gone a bit dark and I'll give you a review and show you with them on. Uh, there we go, so inside. So I've got my switch over here. What I'll do is I'll uh, kind of point the camera outside and then I'll flick the switch on and just demonstrate just how, um, how dark, bright these lights are. So if I point it out, there you go, so you can see how much they're illuminating the uh, up front with the spotlights so on, I've turned them off. It basically goes to pitch black, so they're really impressive lights. Um, I'm over the moon with them. Um, yeah, as I said, all the, all the wiring really easy to do, I'll just flick them on once more just to demonstrate. And there you go, you can see they're lighting up the trees all the way on the other side of the field really bright and uh, yeah really happy with them right so here's just a little close-up on the spotlights you can see kind of if i walk around just how how impressive they are if i point back you can see it's illuminating so far so yeah really happy with the install of those lights yeah they look great